and I, I, this is not sort of mad patriotism, but especially British comedy, I think, and actually Canadian too. Um, American comedy is fantastic for wisecracking um, guys, but they're usually the, if, if, if you'll excuse my French, the, I think of like John Belushi in Animal House. Right. Brilliant performance when there's the little folk singer on his guitar, John Belushi just takes the guitar and smashes him over the head with it and everybody laughs. Now that's great, but to me a real comedian would want to play the folk singer. Right. Not the bully. That's all John Belushi was, a brilliant bully, don't yeah. get me wrong. But he was, I'm the guy with his, the biggest dick in the room, right. is essentially an American comic's view of life. <laughs> Whereas a British comic's view of life is, I've arrived at a party, oh, I forgot my dick. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> um, Yes, I do absolutely sympathise with Charlie Sheen, Sheen because I know what it's like to be an addictive personality and I, I don't know what it's like to go quite that nuts and I hope I would never treat people quite as badly. But you had a public breakdown, though. Oh, I did indeed. What, 18 years ago? Yeah, I did. I, I was cast in a play and I, I was in a very low state about it and I, uh, I walked out, not to put too fine a point on it. There was a Saturday night performance and on Sunday morning at about dawn I drove to a, a channel port in the south of England and, and drove my car onto a boat and a went to Europe and just drove and drove and drove east um, without telling anybody where I was they going. They were looking for you. And they were, they certainly were. Uh, and the police were looking in the attic and uh, digging up the garden of my house thinking I might have done away with myself. And it was a very bad moment, but in the, on the uh, 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 other hand, it was what I believe alcoholics call a moment of clarity. Yeah. Um, <laughs> which I always thought was a moment when you spill claret over yourself. Said, oh, I've, <laughs> I've, see, I've, I've there... gone all clarity. <laughs> what the hell? But there's a moment when you're with your car and you're waiting to get on the ferry yeah. and you have to make the decision, I'm going to drive onto the ferry or yeah. I'm not, because once you're on, you're on it. Absolutely. There's What's no, going no on in your mind there? But to, what was going on in my mind is that I couldn't stay. I couldn't be in England. I couldn't be... In, I had to try and, I mean, I don't know what I thought, I imagined in some fantastic way that I would drive up to the eastern north of Germany and cross the border through Schleswig-Holstein into Denmark and go to the north of Denmark um, and somehow learn Danish <laughs> and, um, and, and get a big white polo neck pullover and a pipe and, and sit on rocks and write poems. Um, <laughs> We're all scared inside. We may all walk big. And those guys who walk along and look really cocky, they're the ones who are most scared. Mm -hmm. They're deeply scared. We're all, you know, we all think everybody else has got a big club while we've got a tiny Q-tip Q behind <laughs> us. And, Ooh, that's all I've got. <laughs> and, and, you know, we all think we've just missed out on, 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 on what life, you know, the secrets of life. And everybody else has got it. Everybody else is, yeah. But the, the, the wonderful secret is that we're all equally afraid and uncertain and that that isn't a bad thing, it's a wonderful. The most amazing one was a man I met, um, I had been a commander in the Royal Navy. In fact, he'd, he'd, be, he'd been in charge of, the, uh, he'd been in charge of the, the Royal Yacht, Britannia, so, which was the Queen's yacht. Um, and he'd suffered really, really badly. And at one point he was in a, in a hospital with, with, a, with light security because he'd been you know, talking to his people you know, about the fact that he was considering suicide. He was really, really low. He managed to evade his secure, uh, security people. He walked out into the road in front of a lorry. And his legs were smashed to pieces and so badly that he had dozens of operations with pins, had them rebroken and rebroken. And it took, took years to get his legs right so he could walk. And I, I remember saying to him, my God, the pain you must have been in. When did it, all these operations. He said, yes. He said, but you have to remember, that pain was nothing like as bad as the pain inside that made me walk into the traffic. Mm -hmm. And that's a thing people don't understand about really severe depression. There's a, there's a very much an attitude, oh, go and walk it off. Yeah. You know, you're just have a good walk, listen to some music, you'll be fine. It's the stiff upper lip. Yeah, right? yeah. and, and it, it's unfortunately not... It just isn't like that. It's, it's like saying walk off the weather. You know, the weather is real and it's right. the weather inside you. you but... But you can perhaps at least say, look what it will do to other people. Right. Did you ever Change get it. that low? Um, yeah, I, I tried to end my life on a number of occasions. Pre-20s, pre uh, a couple of times with a huge mixture of pills. Fortunately for me, it was such a mixture and they, they went together so badly that uh, my brother, um, who, who had a bedroom some, some way away from mine in, in, in my parents' house, was awakened by the sound of my projectile vomit. <laughs> and, and he came in and I was sort of unconscious, but spewing. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I was taken to a hospital and had my stomach pumped. So that was very fortunate. On another occasion, and again, it's sort of faintly comic, really, is um, 
is I put myself in a um, in a garage and put a, a, a duvet, sort of quilt, uh, under the door and put my finger on the keys of the car and, um, and really was thinking of turning the key. But how did you get out of that, though? Like... I was my parents. It was the thought of, of, of doing that to my parents. Just I couldn't bear the idea of how they would respond. I knew that it was a, an awful thing to do to them. That... But what it actually ended up with was, was me um, feeling much better about myself in the right. end, because I realised that I had a, an issue with, with, with mood swings, uh, bipolar disorder, and I, I made a couple of films for the BBC some years later called The Secret Life of the Manic Depressive, mm -hmm. which was a really interesting thing to do because I met people who had the problem even far more than, than I had. Um, and it made me, A, extremely grateful for, for not having you know, manic depression or bipolar disorder as bad, badly as they did, but also grateful for knowing that, um, that one could make a programme about it and try and help alleviate some of the stigma that surrounds mental health issues. I don't know many people, actually, worth knowing, who don't have a mind that sometimes leads them astray. Right. You know, I don't know that sanity real, sober, sensible sanity is such a glorious thing. I think most of the world's advances in creativity and invention mm -hmm. and in almost anything have been done by little spurts of madness. There's a poem by Dorothy, L uh, Dorothy Parker that, that ends, every line ends, you might as well live. And, and sometimes life does seem unsupportable. Not for any logical reason, that's the point. You can't talk someone out of finding life unpleasant by saying, look what you've got. Because right. it's not about that.